began to emerge in other nations. And after de after declaring it as an Praise the most high, okay. Alright, salutations to the nations. Jeremiah Yahweh, servant of the Most High. Bring you Basham Yahweh, Basham Yahweh, Basham Kwakarash. Allah, my man. Allah, Yasharal. Now we will go to the comic board for a little bit of comic board wars, man. It's, I don't know if this guy is really a part of the Great Millstone. None black Hebrew is like camp or what, but he seem to be um, sympathetic towards them or defending them in some instance. Now this guy, he uh, he's been commenting on a video that I published. Um, and he, you know, he said he's accusing me of slandering men and says I should do it. Let's get some of these comments. Comment board wars, man. Guess just catch this guy real quick and wrap wrap him in a body bag like they do in these uh slaying a Yahweh from one end of the earth to the other. Alright, so he says, This is one day ago. In coherent Babylon, you just proved who the true men of the Lord are. Then he references Luke twenty two calls me a flunky. Flunky, if you're going to slander, at least do it in the proper way, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the proper way to slander somebody. <laughs> it's the nigga at the end, right? <laughs> I guess I just throw no nigga in there. I, I guess I just throw a nigga in there. And uh, that's another thing. These guys got heathens in their camp using the N-word all the time. Like they just one blood with us. But they never some dead mixed up, mingled up as heathens. And I would be surprised if that's what this guy is right here. Mixed up, mingled as a heathen. All right, Cleveland. To some false prophets who's leading them into a ditch. Now, <clears throat> let's get on with my response. So uh, my response, which I just responded about an hour ago, you just see. Uh, and I question that that comment with so there's a proper way to slander. <laughs> you know, what scripture is that? So give me a script a biblical reference, right? But this is what your response is, one forty four R ballots. Okay. Well, you weren't making any sense. What was your point you were trying to make? And I referenced the scripture that I read, which is Revelation. Point um, Focusing on the 20th, 18th chapter and the 21st verse. All right, about the mighty angel taking up a great millstone, casting it down with violence to the sea and saying, you know, with that kind of violence, is Babylon going to be thrown down and, and saying that they come in the name of the Most High. Or at least they try to come in his name, but they curse themselves. Because they want to be the great millstone. Will the great millstone get cast down? Okay. All right. So, so here's where we catch this guy. I asked him. He was, um, he responds and question. How is it going to be thrown down? And what is the sea that is used in that context? And who's Babylon? So I just, you know, hit you with a, a question because they want to try always going to these, uh, many different bogus breakdowns. And the bottom line is they whole breakdown is that the end is going to come with a missile. So I just give them the same sort of response, which is a default response. It's the missiles because that's what they got, a default doctrine. And the bottom line is they trust in the missile to destroy their enemies. But they, you know, but they don't admit that they trust in the enemy with the nuclear weaponry and technology which they think can destroy the whole world it can't but they trust in 200 million missiles to get the end about and one of the scriptures that they use is just the one that i asked him about right here in joel we're gonna we're gonna see that so i say this is the missiles and then he adds and the chair lasers in the civil war right so i um i hit it with joe two and five 
it's just the missiles. You know, because the it's just the missiles. Like everything's just the missiles. Like don't don't try to they want to throw the lasers and the chariots in there secondarily. Like that's just like an afterthought, but the missiles is gonna really do all the destruction, right? So uh I read I um I put um drill two five in there. The um, let's get that real quick. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle with rape. Before their face people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Alright, so these guys will tell you that these are the missiles and they give you a whole breakdown about it. So I wanted to see if he agreed with that, and he basically did, because he said, yeah, it's the missiles. And the lasers from the chariots, right? All right. All right, so his response right now is, yeah, it's the missiles. Then he says, but the chariots are going to be there too. But that scripture is talking about the missiles. So he's telling he's telling me that, yeah, Joel 2 and 5 is talking about the missiles. Now let's go back to Joel. Let's go back to Joel. Because I just set a trap out there for you, ass, and you took it, man. Th that's bait, okay? Because it's not talking about no missile, man. All right? So this is actually talking about the plague of locusts, okay? <laughs> These guys that took this and turned this into something about a missile. No way in the world, all right? Let's talk about the locust uh, plague in the land. If you go back to the first chapter, you'll see that. Joel chapter 1 verse 2. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? All right, so let's talk to people who's actually dwelling in the land at the time. Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and the generation another generation. Why? They never seen something like what's coming. That which the palmer worm had left the, had the locusts eaten, and that which the locusts had left had the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm had left had the caterpillar eaten. So that's the plague right there. Man, we trusted heavily in our yearly crops. It was a... Uh, you know, major part of life. That was our economy, so to speak, our livelihood all the way. We, that's what we did. OK. And so let's see if it's literally talking about these things. Is it, is this parabolic or is it literal? Awake ye drunkards and weep. And how all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth for a nation has come up upon my land strong and without number. All right. Whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he had the cheek teeth of a great lion. So these little bitty creatures devour with their teeth, all right? He had laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree, all right? That's what they do, all right? And you niggas ain't never had no uh, acres and acres of land growing crops. So you probably can't relate to this as much because you've been in Babylon in captivity all your damn life. And now you follow false doctrines all your damn life. So you will never really see this picture unless you, you know, somehow the most high is chosen and elect and you will accept a rebuke. All right. And have your eyes open. All right. But, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you people have been deceived by your leaders who just tell you anything. And you just swallow it down. All right. And then you ain't, you know, putting these things together according to precepts. Upon precept, line upon line. He hath laid my vine waste and bark my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. You see that? So that's what locusts do to you, all right? They 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 clean your, they wipe your vine clean, all right? 
and devour everything green in their path. Okay, let's get down a little bit. Verse 14, sanctify your feast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of Yahweh, Yalahayim, and cry unto him. All right, so that was at that time, in real time, okay, uh, uh, imminent threat that, you know, only repentance was going to, uh, you know, prevent from happening. And uh, the Most High grand mercy because he was determined to get show them judgment. A loss for for the day, a loss for the day, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. What's what's gonna happen? Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? So all right, the meat, the bread, all right, the grain, the corn, the all right, the food that we eat, all right, not a missile destroying everything uh, with fiery destruction. That, that's not what this prophecy is talking about, all right? So it's, 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 it's the, the worm, the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar, okay? The, the natural, um, you know, um, the natural ecosystem, so to speak, at hand. Um, you know, but it's being multiplied by by a uh, innumerable amount, and so it's devastating the land. Okay, <clears throat> and that's these 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 thousands and thousands of locusts. All right, all right let's get verse nineteen. Oh Yahweh, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees. Of the field. Alright. So is that a missile? Or is that speaking parabolically now. About. The. Situation of the land being. Um, devoured up. From all its prosperity. Due to. The locust that's eating everything. And uh, the plague that the most high. Has put on the harvest. Remember it's not the meat. Cut off before our eyes. Alright. So there's a fiery judgment upon the land. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is withered. So you, now you got to really look at it in context. Like he tried to ask, what was the context? Hey, man, you got to see things in the context after you read and study a little bit more than a verse or two or a passage or two. Now, let's get to the next trap. The next chapter. Now let's look at verse 20. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee. For the rivers of waters are dried up. And the fire had devoured the pastures of the wilderness. All right. So, it was, you know, uh, the land being plagued. Okay. And uh, it's causing a, a, what you call, um, what, what you would consider a famine and a drought. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. And sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh coming, for it is nigh at hand. Okay? All right? So now again, we just read in the previous chapter that it was the locusts that was plaguing the land. Now, let's look at all this, you know, um, you know, metaphorical speech, parab parabolic talk, which is parables, similitudes of what you can expect as a uh, result of what's going to happen and see what it's still literally talking about as far as prophecy is concerned, what's going to come on the land of Zion. As he just said, blow the trumpet because that means there's imminent danger. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong that had not ever been the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them, a desolate wilderness. You see that? So it strips 
the land bare of all its fruitfulness. Okay, and so a desolate wilderness really means a dry desert in this context. That's what it's speaking about, a, a desert, okay, like desert conditions. Like it was eaten at first, fruitful and plentiful, and then it was a dry desert after it, after they passed through, okay? So they passed through the land and stripped it of its uh, produce, okay, meaning the trees and the fruits of the field. The corn and all the harvests, okay? Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. And again, it shows how they look. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Okay? Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. Shall they leap like the noise of a flame, a fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people said in battle with Ray. So it's just like all of those things, but are not those things. So it's ridiculous to say that this is describing a missile when a missile death, it has an actual flame. But this thing just is like the noise of a flame. It's not a flame. It's not a, a nuclear warhead. OK, <laughs> these guys, you know, what I'm saying, you know, they just stuck on, um, you know, old ancient false bogus breakdowns. And it makes absolutely no sense. Especially, you know, and they claim, and some of you guys brag and boast about how learned and educated you are. But if you, you know, had any reading comprehension, even this is some old King James sort of speaking, you could comprehend this in this context, you know. Um, but again, these things, these words are spiritual and the wicked ain't going to understand them. So, you know, the blind is leading the blind and all of them are going to fall into the ditch. Okay, you know, and you know, and that's and that's and that's exactly why so many people are falling to the wayside, man. All right, stumbling blocks with these false doctors. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness, and again, that's from the famine. Okay. They're going to be astonished at what they see and the result of what happened to them from what they saw is going to be famine. So that, that you know, <laughs> that's a two for one in that passage. You're going to be, all faces shall gather blackness. Okay? All right, so let's get down um, and see in the um, plain context of the words of the Most High what this destruction was from. All right. Let's get verse 18. So after we um, have intercession and prayer made for us by the priest, because we're in the land at the time, we repent, we pray, then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. Verse 19, Yeah, Yahweh will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. So that's all the stuff that we was missing due to the famine caused by the locusts, right? Yeah, that's right. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, okay? Due to all that poverty condition, but I will, and, and plus, you know, the oppression of the heathen, but I will remove, but I will remove Far off from you, the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. OK, so that's for your enemies. All right. Your physical enemies. And now what else? Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh will do great things. Okay? What else? Verse 22, Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. All right? So now you, you animals of the field, guess what? There's some good news for you. The land is going to spring forth some, you know, pastures for you to graze and eat and to be, you know, 
um, nourished, right? For the tree beareth her fruit. Amen. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Okay, what else? Be glad to your children of Zion and rejoice in Yahweh, your Lahayim. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to you to come down for the so like, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Springtime is going to yield you the right amount of rainfall for your crops. That's what he's trying to show you. And the floor shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. So it's not going to be no more, you know, famine and poverty. What else? And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm. Okay. So all these things that was destroying the land and the fruitfulness of it that we saw in Joel 2 and 5. That destruction that they did, I will, he's going to restore that to you. Remember, it was the land made barren like a desert once it used to look like Eden. All right, what did that? And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. That was what? Was it 100,000, 200 million missiles? No, it was the locust, the, calipi, the, the caterpillar, the, the palmer worm, the canker worm. That was the missile. That my gray arm, which I said the monkey, okay? All right, all right, Mr. 144KR, whatever the hell your name is, talk about, you know. What I, what am I gonna do when them false prophets get some power? Hey, them niggas ain't gonna never get no power, okay? If they stay false prophets, all right. And like I said, if they do get some power, I'm gonna rejoice because that means they let go of the damn lies and open up their eyes to the truth, all right? It wasn't a missile, okay? That's right, the locust telling me that this was the missile. That wasn't the missile, okay? All right. That's that was the most highest army of locusts. All right. Copy that, Jack. All right. Shalom to the leg. Two deaths to the false prophet, man. <laughs> 